how Rockefeller created business of Western medicine. As an alternative medicine practitioner, I've had a lot of conversation with patients who are disenchanted with current Western medicine system. The disenchantment is both related to quality of care they receive and also the way in which business of Western medicine, medicine is conducted. This post is a brief historical look at the business of Western medicine. This post will not directly address the aspect of patient care. Instead, it will focus on the origins of our current medical business model. As someone who has been practicing medicine for 10 years, I'll try to keep an open mind and appreciate both and good and bad that coexist in the Western system. In order to understand the current system, it is helpful to have a look at history of the medicine in America. The business story of Western medicine and modern science sense starts with J.D. Rockefeller, 1839 to 1937. Rockefeller is widely considered the wealthiest American of all time and the richest person in modern history. Rockefeller is probably the most famous for skewering a monopoly of America's oil market, but many haven't heard of the rest of the story. By the turn of the 20th century, Rockefeller controlled 90% of all petroleum refineries in America through ownership of the Standard Oil Corporation, which later split into Mobile, Chevron, Exxon, etc. Concurrently, around the 1900s, the science world was getting excited about new petrochemicals and the ability to create a variety of new compounds from oil. Some of the first products derived from petrochemicals were plastic, but organic chemists knew that oil had the potential to create far more than plastic bags. During the same era, early 1900s, scientists were doing groundbreaking work to understand the basic mechanics of life and human health. It was during this time that the essential vitamins were discovered, including B1, B2, vitamin, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D, etc. By identifying these vitamins, science took a huge step forward and enabled simple vitamin remedies to cure conditions that were caused by vitamin deficiency such as scurvy and rickets. And of course, scientists were also involved in research to recreate synthetic versions of these vitamins in the lab. In 1935, vitamin C became the first vitamin to be artificially synthesized in Switzerland. Rockefeller was smart enough to see this as a big opportunity with the possibility that vitamins and medicines could, develop, could be developed from petroleum. He saw the chance to control and monopolize multi multiple industries at once, petroleum, chemical, medical, and of course petrochemicals were the ideal from business perspectives because they could be patented, owned and sold for high profits. There was a big problem with Rockefeller's plan. Natural and herbal medicines were very popular in America during the 1900s. Almost one half of the medical colleges and doctors in America were practicing holistic medicine using extensive knowledge from Europe and American uh, Native American traditions. Rockefeller knew that to get total control of the medical industry, he would have to expurge the competition. So to start, Rockefeller used his vast oil money to purchase part of the German pharmaceutical company, IG Fabium. You can look this company's up in the involvement of World War II. Now that he controlled the drug manufacturing company, he could move forward with the plan to get rid of the competition. In the early 1900s, there was a variety of doctors and healing modalities in America. Some of the medical specialities included chiropractic, neuropathy, homeopathy, holistic medicine, and herbal medicine. To eliminate the competition, Rockefeller, he hired a contractor named Abraham Flexner to submit a report to Congress in 1910. The report concluded that there were too many doctors and medical schools in America, and all and that all natural healing modalities, which had existed for hundreds of years, were unscientific quackery. A report called for standardization of the medical education, whereby only the AMA and other monopoly would be allowed to grant medical school license here in the US. Currently, Flexinger's report did have some valid points, but unfortunately, the motives for the report were entirely driven by, by Rockefeller's desire for complete control of the medical system. Based on the report, Congress acted upon the Flexner's recommendation and changed laws related to medical practice. Incredibly, allopathic medicine became the standard morality. Modality, sorry. 
Even though at the time its main treatment methods were bloodletting, surgery, quite barbaric at the time, and injection of toxic heavy metals that led mercury to supposedly displace disease. With the le legal changes in place, Rockefeller teamed up with Andrew Carnegie and started funding medical schools all over America on the strict condition that they only taught allopathic medicine. Through the power of their huge grants and powerful team, symptomatically dismantled the previous cur curricula of the medical schools, removing any mention of the healing power of herbs and natural treatments. Teachings on a diet and natural non-drug treatments were also completely removed from medical programs. After traditional medicine from schools, Rockefeller made sure to secure his monopoly by launching targeted smear campaigns against his competitors. Homeopathy and natural medicines were discredited and demonised through the newspapers and other media at the time. Some doctors were even jailed for using natural medicine treatments, including treatments that had been used safely and effectively for decades before. In a very short time, medical colleges were all harmonised. All the students were taught the same allopathic system and medicine was now defined as a process of prescribing patented drugs. A pill for nil became the mindset of American medicine. One shocking fact that I found while researching this post was that Rockefeller didn't stop at the US borders. He actually went on to China to spread Western medicine. Upon hearing this, I actually got chills down my spine. Rockefeller wasn't content with just wiping out traditional medicine in America. He saw the bigger market on the other side of the world and wanted to remove traditional Chinese medicine from China. Luckily, his venture in China modestly failed, and mostly failed, and the practice of traditional Chinese medicine was preserved for centuries to come. To quickly summarize what happened in China, the China Medical Board, the CMB, was created in 1914 by the Rockefeller Foundation and provided with a $12 million grant. The Rockefeller's goal was to modernize medical education and to improve practice in medicine in China. They started by building a hospital in Beijing, Peking Union Medical College, which opened in 1919, but they were unable to expand to other locations as planned due to mounting expenses. In short, the diligent work of the Rockefeller and Carnegie was smashed by smashing success. They crushed the underfounded, grassroots competition and created our current medical system. This system continues today where Big Pharma makes large donations to medical schools in exchange for teaching the medical students to use their patented drugs. As part of this system, many alternative treatments are criminalised. For example, by law, it is illegal to treat cancer with any monotony except chemotherapy, surgery or radiation. It is actually a criminal felony for a medical practitioner to treat cancer with anything but these three commodities. Why is this the case? Follow the money. The average cost of cancer treatment is $150,000. So clearly, Rockefeller and his predecessors were keen to keep the monopoly on the one. And of course, American Cancer Society was founded by none other than J.D. Rockefeller in 1913. Hopefully this post will shed a big light on the history of our current medical system at the very least, we can all be less surprised when patients are actually treated like customers and when medications cost thousands of dollars per month, we should not be su surprised. We are faced with the fact that the cost of medicine in America are rated number one, yet the quality of our medicine rate is rated number 37, just below Costa Rica. Unfortunately, these natural efforts that occur within our medicine system is run like a mega corporation instead of service to the people. On a final note, you may notice that there is no granary black and white pictures of J.D. Rockefeller in this post. Perhaps you can guess why. All images of Rockefeller are all owned and their abuse must be paid for. The monopoly stands what Rockefeller built, Rockefeller New Center, New York City. Okay, cool. Anyway, um, I was just going to share a light on that one. I thought it was pretty cool. It just shares everything from the start. Cool. Thanks for watching. Raise your vibrations. Much love. Bye now.